Hello. Hello, Anders. How are you? Can, you? can you hear and see me? I can hear you and see you. How is everything? Uh, yeah, well, it's uh, started to get cold and dark here, so I guess that's a good thing for us <laughs> uh, heavy metal vampires. Yeah. <laughs> Here in Portugal, yeah. it's still extremely warm and sunny, so it's not good oh. for a heavy metal vampire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you can stay inside, so you don't uh, catch the worst things of the sun rays, right? Yeah, exactly. And, uh, you know, let's talk about Sorcerer Reign of the Reaper. You know, another great record. Um, what's been the secret? <laughs> Uh, of of doing the the records uh, or yeah, yeah you... you know it's it's you know since the first records you know since ah you mean time. what's the recipe what's yeah. the, what's the secret yeah uh, I don't know I don't know really I mean um, uh, when we when we reunited uh, uh, we we took uh, you know um, in people that uh, was experienced such as Christian Neiman that I know from uh, when I played in Therion. I wanted to when we started or started over in in 2015 or or earlier really but in 2010 we wanted I wanted to you know play with people that I knew were really good and that could uh, that had the, the experience of you know writing music and stuff like mm -hmm. that so in the early 80s in the late 80s and early 90s uh, I mean we I was young and we all were young and, and we didn't know really what we did, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but um, 27 years later, you know, we we were all very experienced. So I wanted, you know, musicians that could play, and and uh, you know that that's the secret, really. You know, yeah. that we are very experienced and 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 good musicians, I guess. Yeah, and you know, quickly going to that beginning of Sorcerer, uh, things didn't work out. You guys released two demos and. Uh, why didn't you think it worked back then? Was it because of the inexperience? Uh, you guys weren't sure exactly the direction musically. What do you think was the issue for not working the first time around? Grunge. <laughs> grunge was the reason. No, really. Uh, I mean, the, the grunge uh, wave uh, uh, hit Sweden pretty hard in the mid-90s, 92, 93, somewhere there. And um, hard rock, uh, the, the kind we played, weren't so popular at all, you know. And uh, we weren't alone. I mean, um, all the bigger bands, um, like classic bands like Saxon and Accept and all of those bands, they, they started playing in small clubs and, and, and we used to play in arenas, you know. And, and now it, it was only Nirvana and Pearl Jam and whatnot, you know, Alice in Chains. And, um, I'm okay with that, but that's the reason uh, why it happened. Really, we uh, disbanded and uh, pursued other, you know, musical uh, endeavors. Really, so yeah. that, that wasn't. Uh, if if we would have gotten a record deal uh, back then, I think things would have looked different today. But but we couldn't. We couldn't yeah. get a deal. Yeah. So that's the reason why. And now you do it, the fourth record. And uh, when did you guys start working on the songs for Reign of the Reaper? We start working, um, it's the same, <laughs> we have the same recipe almost for all the albums that we made, except the first one, because the first one, uh, Johnny Hagel had all, all all the ideas for all the songs, and Christian reinterpret them and, and rearrange them and stuff like that. But um, uh, after that, uh, we start writing material for new albums uh, about one, one and a half year before it's actually released. Yeah. I mean, it's been already mixed and finished and everything for six months now already. So, so but, but we need a lot of time to um, uh, promote and release the, the album. Yeah. And not we, but our label you now. Yeah. It's, it's six months uh, preparation, so. It's already old for us. <laughs> yeah. That's what I was going to ask. Like, does it feel weird, you know, because you got this music already for so long and you even have played them, played it live, you know? <laughs> and so when you go into stage, it's like, you must feel like old songs for you and you're probably already itching to start new ones. <laughs> 
No, but um, there is one thing that we do that maybe other bands don't. I mean, we when we write music, we don't stand around in the rehearsal room and, and jamming and stuff like that. We write everything um, digitally and we, 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 we have a folder or a space in, in Dropbox where we gather all ideas and, uh, you know, the guys, the, both Peter and, and Christian, the guitar players that are the, the guys that write the mo most of the stuff today, they put up their ideas on Dropbox and me and our co-producer, Connie Villian, we suck that down and into and, and start writing melodies and stuff like that. So actually, the first time uh, we hear uh, the finished uh, song is when it's mixed. Okay. And the first time we we play the song is after we mix the record. So we never we haven't played the songs really. Yeah. So we're not tired of them yet. <laughs> but I mean, but I mean they've been around for a while, of course. Yeah. But uh, yeah, uh, we, it's a bit strange. Yeah, and you know when you guys prepare for the live shows, you have to listen to the songs again. And yeah, we have to learn the songs. You know. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know how 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 we did it, and uh, I mean, I can memorize the melodies and and stuff like that, and the, the guys can also memorize a lot of stuff. But it's a lot of you know yeah. practicing and and getting the the solos right, and 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 uh, yeah, and all the music, and it, it's different, you know, to record an album, then uh, and then uh, record a song, and then play a song live. I mean, we need to make it work. Uh, because the music is very big and very uh, epic and, and large, you know, so we need to figure out how are we going to do this live? You know, we don't want to have a ton of backing tracks, but we have some tracks, you know, when it, where it's obvious, where it's a big choir or something, we can't do that. But yeah. otherwise we try to, to sing as much as possible. I mean, Peter, Christian and I, and, and uh, Justin growls and everyone contributes uh, vocally. So, so yeah. It's a it's a challenge, but it works. Yeah, you know, I remember I only saw you guys live once. Was at Bloodstock, uh, 2022. It was a great show. I think you know you were you were one of the bands I was really looking forward to seeing the festival because I never saw you guys and I really enjoyed the records. And you know, live, you guys really you know. It's epic as the records. <laughs> it was it was a great show. I think I think everybody was happy after you guys finished because it was really really a great performance. Do you remember that show? Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, I was uh, very surprised that it was uh, so much people when we were playing. We're playing in the middle of the day. Yeah, uh, very hot. I remember it was very <laughs> very hot also, but uh, it must have been like fifteen twenty thousand people in the audience and i mean uh, that that's a wonderful feeling and um, of course daylight as we talked before it's not our element really it's uh, i think uh, you know this kind of music that we play that are you know epic and bombastic and we needed lights and and dark and you know to get to get up to the to the top you know of uh, delivery but as long as we can play uh, you know, and perform the songs in a good way. I think it, it doesn't matter really. It, it, I mean, people are pumped to see it in, anyway. So, yeah. And, uh, you know, going to this record, you know, Morningstar, for instance, lyrically, it's about uh, the um, the fall of Satan or the yeah. Lucifer in this case. Um, yeah. Um, how do you get the inspirations for, for, um, for the lyrics normally? Yeah, well, we, we touch a lot of different subjects uh, during the years. Uh, you know, there's some knights, there's some uh, crusaders, there's some uh, slaves in Egypt, there's some, you know, and all these kinds of subjects. We, 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 we do a lot of songs about good and evil and, and uh, you know, Satan and, and uh, you know, witches burning and, you know, yeah. these dark, dark subjects. But I, I think, you know, when you, when you play the kind of music we do, it's hard to, uh, I, I couldn't imagine doing uh, what we do with a political lyric or yeah. what, whatever, you know, it wouldn't be the same. We want to, we want to project, you know, when the listener listens to the, the songs, we have a lot of effects, you know, with crows cracking and thunder and, and rain and stuff like that to get the listener into 
the mood of the song, you know. Uh, it, it's supposed to be uh, cinematic almost, yeah. you know. When you listen to you close your eyes and you get sucked into this uh, thing. And we, we try to keep the lyrical lyrics a bit abstract, uh, not, you know, this guy go, walks into the, to the house, he falls on an ax and, and kills himself. Yeah. You know, it's not, not, not that, you know, it's, it's more abstract. And uh, sometimes, you know, it's more painted up, you know, you run on a, on a, on a gloomy path in, into the woods and you see a fire in the distance, some, you know, but you, you're, we're not describing it too clearly or too yeah. obvious. We try to keep it a bit fuzzy. So you, the listener, can, out of your own, uh, you know, can, can decide what, yeah, yeah, can decide what the song is about. But uh, yes, we, we touch a lot of those uh, subjects. And uh, I, I, for me, I love movies and stuff like that. Yeah. So uh, if, if, uh, if that could be an explanation. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, for it's all fantasy. We have some some facts also, of course, yeah. but 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 mostly we we keep to the fantasy and, yeah. and uh, no. because like yeah. a song like Curse of Medusa, you know, with yeah. the Middle East Middle Eastern you know melody on the guitar, you know, would have to be something taken out of a movie, you know, epic stuff. You know, it couldn't be anything. It couldn't be about. COVID. No, <laughs> no, it's exactly what I mean. You know, when we when we hear the music that the guys have played for the first time, we're going to come up with a title to to the track and, and maybe some uh, lines to the verses or whatever. You know, when we when we come up with the melodies for the song, we write you know stuff and and a title to the song that you know catches the 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 feeling of the song. You know, it's very important, I think, to to uh, have a title that goes along with the uh, music yeah because it's it's like a, a headline over the the music you know yeah. it, it puts the song in in, in center and um, of course uh, uh, the, the, the um, curse of medusa it, 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 it is also you know history and uh, greek mythology yeah. kind of stuff and and uh, uh, Justin is really interested in in reading and and a lot of history and stuff like that. So he's he's the one that finishes up all the lyrics. Me and Connie, our co-producer, we come up with some cool lines and then he is just you know transform it into something really cool. I think so. Yeah, yeah. that's the process really. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's yeah. a nice, you know, when you come like with melodies, you know, because normally a melody doesn't have like proper words or like a proper you know when you hear you singing you know the melody was that you were singing was probably words that didn't make any sense Is exactly that you... it was bullshit from the from the start <laughs> not all of it because some of the stuff are we come up with instantly are pretty good so we keep those that make sense you know but yeah. otherwise i i i know that we've been writing stuff that and we can't come up with a good line and i just do one two three four five or whatever you know to yeah. get the phrasing right you know and then we we dig into the so the lyrics are the last thing on the the writing process that i'm getting done you know right before we go in and do the actual album the, yeah. the lyrics are finished so yeah. uh, for me for me personally uh I've, I've I've surely written a hundred lyrics uh, through the years uh, with different bands and stuff like that. I am not really a lyric person. I'm yeah. a more more of a melody person. Yeah. But uh, I, I I know that people think you know that it's important with lyrics. I I, I remember once there was a guy uh, came up to me. Uh, this was a long time ago, and he said, "I listened to this song and it and it changed my life." And I, I thought back, oh, I wrote that in 10 minutes, you know, and some lyrics you work on for days, you know, yeah. and nobody cares. <laughs> <laughs> nobody, nobody even mentioned those. So, so uh, for me, it, the words needs to fit with the melody, if you mm. know what I mean. It, it needs to fit, it needs to have a hook uh, also yeah. in the words, you know. Yeah. Like the great and and now passed away, Ronnie James Dio once was, uh, you know, he was the king yeah. of, of of this kind of, uh, you know, lyricist. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was, you know, it was great. You know, for me, it's always interesting to try to understand because 
people are different. Musicians are different when they're writing. And, you know, mm -hmm. I know a lot of singers when they're writing like vocal melodies, it's all gibberish, first of all. Yeah. It's just try to get like a, a good melody. You know, obviously some words fit in that melody, others don't. And then that's when they go for the lyrics and, uh, you know, yeah. try to make sense all of it but the melody is important in the in that i mean i mean without for me with doing this kind of music and for me in my all my musical career melody has been center of everything you know the song is the center you know you can have fantastic guitar players as we do both peter and christian are amazing guitar players we have an amazing drummer we have a really amazing bass player that, that we are very good at what we do but without the song we're nothing yeah so the song is center and and it's so important and i i refuse to leave anything to to uh, you know um, not to try to do my very best both in in verse in bridge and in chorus you know it's so important that there is something to grip take grip of you in every section of the song really so and, and maybe that's why that's why we uh, uh, you know succeed in what we do yeah. uh, with the, the, the albums that we released we are relentless on, on that yeah. you know and that's a good thing you know because yeah the final result shows that and was there any song on this record that gave you goosebumps so to say when you were singing and you're like, okay, this is a good one. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, the Morning Star when we when we came up with that uh, chorus, you know, that was, uh, you know, we high five in the studio. We do that a lot, you know, and also the the core the the choir in the in the ending, you know, both me and Connie, we are huge Man of War fans, and we were like, yeah, this is fucking, you know, epic and big. It's Man of War, you know. It's, yeah, so so we 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 laugh a lot, and we have a lot of, you know influences um, uh, that we picked up along the way you know and and uh, uh, i think that you know to be uh, unique today is very hard and i think it's better to to you know grow with the music that you listen to and and try to do something of your own but with your back leaning towards those big bands you know that you grew up with or that you like you know no, I, for me, it, it's a very simple thing to say. It's like the wheel has been created. You know, there's no point in trying yeah. to make the wheel square or no. <laughs> whatever no, shape. No, no, it's it's done. It works like that. You know, just go along with it. There's nothing. Yeah, and, and and now and then there is a new subgenre popping up. You know, it's been evolving. Uh, all the time hard rock heavy metal is evolving all the time mm. but i don't feel the need for it we we try to spice our music with you know different new stuff you know like growling and and uh, you know blasting drums like on this album we have it's more drums intense this album than we ever done before and and you know we try to we try not to repeat ourselves but mm. You know, it's a sorcerer album. You will hear it's sorcerer because it's big and you know epic and everything. But we also try to change a little bit and 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 maybe not only in the music we write, but also in the format. Yeah. You know, this time we we did an old school thing, we a shorter album, one vinyl, you know, yeah. eight songs like the the old old days. You know, yeah. So we want we think about those kind of things too. You know, we can't be putting out double vinyls all the time uh and, either you know and tires them to change the, the albums all the time <laughs> yeah and you know what the thing with double vinyl now it's it would be fucking expensive anyway you know yeah. it's yeah. You, you know i understand you know bands when they put out double vinyl mm. what pisses me off it's when the we have a double vinyl and then one of the sides is etched each double yeah. right? whatever it is yeah. there's nothing there and i'm like fuck no. it, like just you know yeah okay. yeah save, save a couple of songs for ne next record or whatever yeah. you know yeah, yeah i think also you know when a cd came along a long time ago now people try uh, started to put more songs on, on yeah. the albums you know and we tried not to do that but 
we have a disadvantage. We write very long songs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the songs are seven, eight, nine minutes. And if you want to have a, if you don't don't want to release an album with three songs, you know. It's, yeah. So it's it's got to be longer. But this time we thought about that and. And then uh, we had 15 ideas, and we took them down to to eight. That's yeah. on the on the album, actually. So yeah. You spoke about Manowar. You can you could do something like Achilles' Last Stand, whatever the name of the song is. We has like I don't know how many parts, and it's like it's a one big epic song, and it's I think it's great. And you know I'd be happy with something like that if there's like a story a connection. Uh, part one, part two, part three, kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but the last album was. Uh, uh, more like a conceptual album. Every song st stood on its own, but it was uh, revolving around the, the witch burnings in, in the 16th century. Um, uh, we might do a proper, uh, you know, uh, conceptual album with, with actual uh, an actual story yeah. in the future, but it, we haven't decided yet. And I think, you know, as I said, we don't want to repeat ourselves either. So. Uh, you don't know what's what will happen next time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe we play polka or something. I yeah. don't know. <laughs> there are certain boundaries you shouldn't cross. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I, I'm I'm uh, kidding, of course. <laughs> I know. You know, another song that I enjoy was "Unveiling uh, Blasphemy." It's you know, it's. And I, I mean, all the songs are great. You know, I was, I was doing a walk before this interview. I, I just, I need to go for a walk every day, or I try to. But you know, I was listening to the, to the album, and uh, you know, I, it was a gr very enjoyable. And then "Villain Blasphemy" was another one that you know stood out for me. You know, for the you know great strong melodies, and you know great guitar solos, which is something I appreciate a lot in a band, a band that can yeah. play the instruments, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the, the solos, the twin solos, we always have, almost every song has a dual kind of thing, that both Peter and Christian play the solo. The, the solos are often quite long, you know, but that they, we need, it's a trademark we have. Yeah. And I think uh, they are so good players, you know, that we need to give them some space, you know, to to show what they're all about. And, and uh, I think we're pretty unique in, in that sense that we have such talented guitar players to in, in the same band, you know, that's yeah. pretty unusual, I think. Uh, and, and, and they have their own style. You know? yeah. Peter is more old school, Michael Schenker kind of, and, and Christian is out of this world, you know, with all these notes he's playing all the time. So it's a, a nice uh, combination, I think. Yeah. And, you know, with the album coming out at the end uh, of this month, um, touring plans, what's, what are in the books that you can reveal? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we actually started rehearsing them and learning the songs. <laughs> We're going to play uh, uh, four songs out of the album. Uh, we have a release uh, show, a headline show. Uh, in uh, at Hammer of Doom in in, in Würzburg in uh, November, seventeenth of November, we're going to headline that show, and and uh, then we have uh, nothing this year, but the early spring we go to Poland to play, and we go to uh, Germany in April. I think there was another German show that I can't uh, put my finger on right now. And also uh, in March in uh, Malmo in the southern of Sweden. So there's a few shows. We're not really a touring band. Yeah. I mean, I guess you figured that out by now. Yeah. But but um, we want to uh, go out and play, of course. And we, but we're looking for festivals um, foremost. Uh, you know, gigs we did in 2022, uh, Hellfest, Bloodstock, fantastic festivals and good for us, you know, playing in front of a lot of people at yeah. one time, you know, instead of playing small club shows with only 150 people that are great, but they, they know us already, you know, yeah. they, they come because they know us. We, we want to pan out and, and spread the gospel, so to speak. So I think we, we playing festivals is uh, more our, th our thing. And we just signed with a new uh, uh, booking agency, We Live. And we I hope uh, that they can help us come out and do some some more of those festivals and, and uh, maybe connecting club gigs to, to festivals. But we're, we're, we're talking about doing a week, a week and a half, you know, uh, but that would be in 
in in uh, the Benelux or in yeah. Germany or something where it's close by, you know, it, it's very expensive also touring. Yeah. So, uh, so, so um, yeah, uh, yeah, it, it, but there's it, a lot of it, yeah. lot of stuff. But twenty twenty five shows a year or something yeah. like that. Yeah, it makes sense to do like a smaller little mm. tours for a week, a week and a half yeah. in the region. Like I know like like Portugal and Spain, we are in the S of Europe. So it would make sense for a band to do shows in Spain and probably one or two in Portugal if they can. Yeah. You know, it's and uh you know, unless you're a big band that you have like some money behind you to put exactly. on to go on the road. Otherwise, you know, play a few shows where you can make some money and that's it. You know, it's, yeah, yeah. That's all you can do. No, because... it's hard. It's hard, you know, and we, we would love to go to Portugal, of course, and, and play, you know, that would be a dream. I've never been there playing. We've been to Spain and, and Italy and uh, we, no, no, I've never been in Italy with Sorcerer actually, but, but, you know, we've been in a lot of yeah. European countries and it would be great, you know, to, to, uh, be able to go come down and i don't know maybe a festival or something can 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 book us and we can fly down you know yeah. play for you for you yeah. guys yeah there is a a few festivals here that might make that happen so you know we have yeah. to play them <laughs> yeah 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 i hope so i hope that they understand that we are ready to rock whenever they want <laughs> and you know, before you go, Anders, you know, you you mentioned Manowar, you mentioned Dio, as you know, influences. What was the the first recollection you had, you know, from heavy metal that really got the grip on you, and you were like, okay, no, this is. I know exactly. I know exactly what it was. It was in 1982 when uh, Accept released uh, Restless and Wild. Mm. When I heard Fast as a Shark for the first time, I, I thought, what the fuck is this? <laughs> and then, then while I was hooked, I still listen to the album. I think it's one of the top albums ever made. Yeah. Restless and Wild, actually. I think it's a uh, killer still. Uh, yeah, that was the, the key. And then everything else came, you know, it was an eye opener for me. I wasn't, I, I still listen to every kind, all kinds of music. I'm not uh, just heavy metal, you know, I listen to jazz opera and uh, whatnot, but uh, some of those classics uh, are still, you know, wow. Get goosebumps now thinking about it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, one of the things about Sweden, it's how many great bands c com that come out of Sweden. You know, mm. it, I I've talked with plenty of bands and I know there is government grants and stuff that help, you know, you guys, uh, you know, rehearse and do stuff that still happens to this day for a band is it easy to get like a grant or you know some su sort of support to be a musician uh, I, I i don't really know i know those uh, uh labor kind of organizations still is out education organizations still um, are are you know doing this uh, but i can't really answer anymore uh, to that i don't know either how how the you know the the younger uh, bands are they active uh, you know because uh, you lose touch you know I, i'm not out and about uh, yeah. as i were you know when i was 25 30 you know every weekend you were out and you were listening to what's happening you know in in, in all the suburbs around stockholm and, and such like that but and the cultural life is really important in Sweden, has always been. And uh, musicians, uh, yeah, they grow on trees here. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, <laughs> there, there are very, very, uh, a lot of very good uh, musicians and singers. My God, there's so many great singers in Sweden. So I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah it's fantastic. I, I don't, I don't have the answer, but I think one of one one answer could be that you know that we have this uh, commune uh, school you know with with music and stuff like that so i, I don't know it's yeah. in in our blood perhaps somehow yeah. i don't know <laughs> probably thank abba for putting sweden yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. anyway and thank, thank yeah. you much for your time all the best for sorcerer hope to see you guys again you know maybe at bloodstock again or <laughs> yeah that would be great <laughs> i actually talked to to one of the you know one of the guys that runs the show that booked us the last time he said that 
you can't play in 2023, but in 2024, you're welcome back. So let's hope that he hears the album and, and that it's, you know, the, that it climbs the charts in yeah. Europe. Maybe we'll, we'll see. Are you going? I'm I'm probably I I missed this year because it's becoming expensive as well you know to because I have to fly from Portugal to Ireland where I have family yeah, yeah. and from there it's cheaper in a way to fly to the mm -hmm. UK or just take a ferry and then mm -hmm. drive to Bloodstock so maybe okay. next year because they already have like a Monomart and Opets confirmed yeah, okay. and you know it's a great festival I love the place yeah. I love the people yeah. And uh, you know, I might just might go. If if we play, if we play, contact me and I'll get you a backstage pass. Okay. All right, Anders. Okay. Thank you very much, and uh, you know, I hope to see you soon. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank, thank you. you very much. Bye bye. Good night. Bye bye. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye.